Mr. Hughes here from Crestwood Middle School. Go Cougars, yeah! I'm going to do a short video showing you the differences between direct and indirect measurement. If I want to measure this pole here, not too hard. I've got a measuring tape in my hand. I can measure it directly. 57 inches, no problem. No math required, just reading a tape measure. Different story though when you're trying to measure this. It'd be pretty difficult to measure this directly. My tape measure's not long enough and I can't get up there. Neither can you. Unless, of course, you're anything like this guy. Ready for the master monkey? Or you've got a buddy like this. I am yet back! House! House! <laughs> well, I don't know anybody like that. So, I gotta figure it out some other way. Rather than measure this pole directly, I'm gonna use mathematics to measure it indirectly. One of the methods I use doesn't actually use the pole. Instead, we use its shadow. I've taken a board here and I've cut it to exactly 70 inches, measured and cut it myself. And now I'm gonna measure its shadow. So I've got one measurement here, the 70 inches, and then I'm gonna get the other part of my ratio by measuring its shadow. And I've already got my tape measure here lined up. I go right to the edge of the shadow, and that is 100 inches. So now I've got my two measurements, I'm going to take that and I'm going to compare it to my measurements for the pole. And now that I've measured my stick, which I knew the measurement of, and its shadow, now I'm over here measuring the shadow of the thing I don't know. And that's this pole. Alright, now we've got all the measurements we need to measure this pole indirectly. We measured the board, that was 70 inches. Its shadow was 100 inches, there's one ratio. Now we're measuring the shadow of the pole, which comes out to be exactly 700 inches. We've got everything we need, let's go do the math. Okay, now we're gonna talk about some of the mathematics behind indirect measurement. If you see over here on the left side, we have a drawing of our light pole. This is the big, tall thing we were trying to measure, and we had no idea how to measure it directly. Then over here on the right side, I have my board. And my board, I did know, was 70 inches. So I'm going to label that. The shadow of the board I also measured, and that was a hundred inches. Okay, now I went over to the pole and I measured the shadow of the pole. And the shadow of the pole came out to be 700 inches. All right, so we've got three things we know and one thing we don't. I'm going to show you how to use similar triangles and equivalent ratios to solve for the unknown piece. We're going to label that unknown piece X. There are a couple ways to do this. First of all, I want you to see that these are indeed similar triangles. When the sun rays shine down, they come at the same angle for the board and for the pole. You have to make sure that you do this at the same time of day. So you, you notice I measured these both during the same time and now I'm going to set up a ratio of object to shadow. So I'm going to set that up as a fraction. Object over shadow. So the object there was 70 inches and the shadow was 100 inches. And because these are similar triangles, I know that their sides are in proportion to one another meaning that I should get equivalent ratios. So I'm going to go over to the pole here. The board's height was 70. 
and the pole's height, we're not sure, so we're going to put X there. The, the board's shadow was 100, and the pole shadow we did measure, and that gave us 700. Okay, now we go back to what we know about equivalent fractions. We have similar triangles here, and we know that similar triangles are in proportion and should make equivalent ratios. Here's one way to solve this. I know to get from 100 to 700, I have to multiply by 7. And to keep fractions equivalent, if you do something to the bottom side, the denominator, you have to also do it to the top side, the numerator. So I have to also multiply this by 7. And then what we find out is that 70 times 7 gives us 490 over 700, which means that we now have our missing piece, which is the height of the pole. So that, that pole's height now is 490 inches.